This video is a worked example of designing an active bandpass filter. It's the worked example that comes from section 24.4 of the Applied Analog Electronics textbook. All right, so what are the specs and how are we going to achieve it? Well, what I want is a passband from 100 hertz to 1 kilohertz. And I want a gain of 5, or more precisely, minus 5 at the peak of the passband. Okay, all of our designs look alike. We have a capacitor and resistor in either order, in series, coming into the negative input of the op amp. We have a capacitor and a resistor in parallel the feedback, and the positive input of the op amp just goes to a reference voltage. And we don't need any current from the reference voltage, so we don't even need uh, a unity gain buffer. We just need some way of generating a constant voltage there. All right, let's give some names here, CI and RI for the input, uh, RF and CF for the feedback. And we have some, some formulas. Um, we had formulas for uh, tau i and tau f, um, where tau i is just r i c i and tau f is r f c f, and we had that the, these two time constants were the roots of a quadratic equation: tau squared minus one over omega lo times tau plus one over omega low, omega high. So we have that quadratic equation to determine what these two time constants are. It doesn't tell us which one's which, just that those are the two. And we have that the gain can also be written as uh, RF or minus RFCI times omega low. So we can now get three time constants. We can get the RICI and RFCF, though not necessarily knowing which one's which. We can also get RFCI just by solving these equations. Let's do the RFCI uh, one first. All right, so we've got five, and we want to divide that by two pi times 100 hertz. So divide by two, um, and then divide by pi and then divide by 100. And we get that this uh, RFCI is approximately 7.958 milliseconds. That's a pretty big time constant. Um, what about the roots of this equation? I could do on my calculator um, quadratic equation, but too much trouble. I'm going to go and do that uh, on a different way using GNU plot. And here's what I did to use GNU plot. First of all, I just typed in what is the quadratic formula? Minus B, plus or minus. Well, I can't do plus or minus, so I'll just do, do it twice, once with plus, once with minus. Square root of B squared minus 4AC, all divided by 2A. So I've got quad one, quad two, or give me one root, give me the other root. And then I uh, say, what's omega low? Two pi times 100. What's omega high? 2 pi times 1,000. Um, and then I just print quadratic formula, first root for 1 minus 1 over w low and 1 over w low w high. Those were the uh, coefficients of the quadratic equation I had. And I get, um, I'll write this down over my paper here, uh, one of my roots here is 1.412 milliseconds. And then I printed out the other root. Um, and that's uh, 179.37 microseconds. All right, so those are my two tau values. If we go back to looking at this thing on paper. I've got three time constants, 7.958 milliseconds for RFCI, and then 1.412 milliseconds and 179.37 microseconds. Um, I've got four values, RF. CF, RI, CI, and only three equations. So I've got some arbitrary choice to make. 
And then I'll also have to make a choice of which one of these is associated with I and which one's with F. So let's go through and make some approximations, make some guesses. Um, and the biggest time constant I got here was this RFCI. It's about eight milliseconds. Um, so let's let's make CI pretty big. And by pretty big, if I'm doing ceramic capacitors, one microfarad is reasonable. I mean, I could go bigger, go smaller. One microfarad is a good place to start. What would that give me for RF? Well, it would give me, I can turn this on here again. I've got uh, 7.958 milliseconds divided by one microsecond. And I get, 7.958 um, kilo ohms. Well, that's not a nice round number. Not one of the ones on the you know, E6 or E12 series. Uh, what, what can I remember around there? So this was CI, and let's put RF being, let's make it 8.2 kilo ohms. That's in the right ballpark anyway. It gives about that value. Um, and now we've got to figure out which of these two time constants is which. Well, I made CI be pretty big in order to get the RFCI being a big time constant, so I probably want to make it be with a big time constant here also, because if I put it with a small time constant, I need a really, really tiny RI. I don't like really tiny resistors. So let's put it with, with this one. So if I do um, 1.412 milliseconds and divide that by the microfarad, and I get um, 1.412 for Ri, so that would be um, Ri. Well, let's round that to, again, one of the common values, 1.5 kilo ohms. And that leaves us with uh, this time constant to be RFCF. So we take 179.37 microseconds and divide by 8.2 kilo ohms, and I get 20. 2 nanofarads. So here I have a design. Is it right? Did I make an arithmetic error? Who knows? Um, this is not the first time I recorded this video because in some of my earlier ones I kept making calculation errors and getting things that didn't work. Um, so let's see if I got it right this time. But I don't want to have to go through with the pocket calculator and you know, type in numbers wrong and get the get the answers wrong again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a GNU plot script. And this is a GNU plot script that I use for checking student designs. Basically what it does, let's go through the different parts here. I load definitions.gnu plot just to get all the definitions of, you know, what's the impedance of a capacitor or what's the parallel impedances, all that stuff. Um, set up some uh, labeling and the range. Uh, from 1 hertz to 100 kilohertz is fine for what we're looking at here, which is centered around, you know, uh, what, between 100, around 300 hertz. So this looks fine. Then I define just gain function for bandpass. It's minus the parallel impedance divided by the series impedance, so just with the RFCF. Um, I picked out the formula for the low corner frequency. Now remember, we had formulas for omega low. Here I want F low, so I had to divide by 2 pi. Uh, same thing for the high corner frequency. I had to divide both divide omega high by 2 pi in order to get this frequency, the, this formula for the high corner frequency. I have a formula for the peak gain, RFCI over RFCF plus RICI. Um, and that's, notice, that's the magnitude of the peak gain. If I wanted the actual peak gain, I'd have to negate it. Um, and then I did an approximation function. So I had the bandpass thing up there, which was the true complex gain. The approximation one is take the asymptotic line up to the low corner frequency, take the peak gain then over to the high corner frequency, and then take the other asymptotic line coming down. And all those formulas are just the ones that we derived previously. Um, then I've got uh, plotting out the thing, plot out the actual absolute value of the gain and print out echoing in the uh, legend what the resistors and capacitors I'm actually using are. That'll help me catch if I have a typo there, feeds back something different from what I expected. I go, wait a minute, that's not what I wanted there. Um, and then the approximations, I will report there what are the corner frequencies and what's the peak gain. So that if I, again, have values wrong, I'll get, oh, that's not a gain of minus five, it's a gain of minus two, something's wrong. Um, 
and that's in fact how I detected that I'd made calculation errors when I did previous versions of this video is that to go, wait a minute, I was expecting minus five there and that's not minus five, what happened? Um, so let's see if I got it right this time. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to the new plot and I'm going to try to type in the values that I just claimed I was going to use for uh, the values. So ri, ri, I was gonna make that be 1.5 kilo ohms. And ci, I was going to make one microfarad. And rf, I was going to make 8.2 kilo ohms and CF I was going to make mm, 22 nanofarads all right and now I should be able to load that script that I call something like active yeah there it is okay 1.5 kilo ohms, one microfarad, those look right there. 8.2 kilo ohms parallel 22 nanofarads, that looks like what I wanted to type in there. Um, from 94.7 hertz, that's not too bad. It's a little low for 100 hertz, but not too much. Um, minus 4.88, mm, a little bit low on the gain. I wanted minus five, but minus 4.8 is not too far off. 988.34 hertz, a little bit low on that corner frequency also. Um, now, if I don't like that gain being too low, let's say I was thinking maybe 9 is 5 is supposed to be the minimum gain of the filter. If I'm below that, that's not so good. Um, so how could I increase the gain? Well, kind of, I could either increase the impedance of the feedback element, or I could decrease the impedance of the, um, of the input one. So we can go down, say, let's take our eye down a little bit. Um, what's the next lower one? 1.3 kilo ohms. Let's try that. So instead of 1.5 kilo ohms, let's try 1.3 kilo ohms. Now that's a pretty small change, so it should make a pretty small change in the design. Yeah, our gain is up to 5.5. So it did increase the gain, just like we hoped. Maybe it increased it too much, not hitting our target of minus five, but I don't know really what the spec was on that. I just said gain of minus five. I didn't say whether that was minimum gain, the maximum gain. I didn't say whether that's the typical gain, what the tolerance would be around that. How far off can I miss it by? So I didn't give a complete spec. And that's a problem with homework problems often and quiz problems is they don't, they don't really tell you what the constraints are on the design. They just give you, hey, solve this numeric problem. And that's not really what engineering is about. It's trade-offs. And we don't know what the trade-offs are because we don't know what the hell we're using this thing for. So make up a bunch of designs and say, here's a bunch of designs. What do you want? Um, so here's one that says we can get that gain to be higher rather than lower than minus five, than the minus five. Um, and here we got our corner frequencies a little bit better than before. Uh, 1,004.66 is quite accurate on that corner frequency. And 107.5, well, it's a little high. Um, so here's a, another design. Um, if we were allowed to use E48 resistors, we could have gone for 1.4 kilo ohms instead of 1.3. So let's see what that does. So instead of 1.3, if we're willing to pay a little bit more for our resistor, we can go to 1.4. And what does that do? Now we got that 5.189. Uh, 5 we're a little bit above 5, but not a lot above. Uh, the 995.9 hertz is um, still pretty good. Five hertz, five out of a thousand off, half a percent. And the 100.7, uh, that's 0.7% uh, off. Th that looks like quite a good match to the specs that we were given. Um, is that the only possible design? No, there's lots of possible designs. Uh, let's say we didn't really want to use those one microfarad capacitors because to get a one microfarad capacitor, you pretty much have to go with a cheap ceramic capacitor. Uh, the the good ones, the C0G and MP0 capacitors, they're a little bit expensive when you try and get up to a full microfarad. Uh, let's let's say let's say we want to do everything with C0G, so we can get you know 
more repeatable values here, not so much temperature dependence, things like that. Uh, then we probably don't want to go over you know, 47 nanofarads, say. Can we do this thing with only 47 nanofarads to CI? Let's go back to paper and see if we can come up with a design. Instead of a microfarad, we start with 47 nanofarads. See if we can do that. This is the one I keep screwing up in the, my previous versions of this video. So let's see if I can do it this time. All right. Um, I'll pick a different color here. So let's say the, 40, the CI is only 47 nanofarads. Can we propagate through the same way we did before, getting values that make sense? So we start with a 7.958 uh, milliseconds, divide by 47 nanofarads, and I get 169 kilo ohms, which happens to be a fairly standard value. Um, so that's nice. Uh, now we've got to do the these two, which of these constants is which. Again, if that's our big CI, that's going to be our big, uh, that's probably going to go with the milliseconds. Is that going to work out? Um, No, that's not such a big CI anymore. And uh, what happens with the microseconds? The microseconds now has to go with this. Uh, if we did that with the RFCF, uh, we'd need to get a pretty tiny capacitor. Let's let's try making um, this one the RICI this time. Let's see if that we can make that. It's just swapping which of the two time constants is which. We've made a much smaller capacitor here. Um, so we, let's see what happens with 179e6, so that's the 179 microseconds, and divide it by 47 nanofarads, and that gives this being 3.8 kilo ohms. Uh, I think 3.9 kilo ohms is a standard value. And that would give us the 1.4 for the RFCF, so that's giving me CF is... Okay, the one point, uh, not one, one point four one two milliseconds, and I want to divide that by RF one sixty nine kilo ohms, and I get eight point three uh, nanofarads. Well, closest one I can remember there is eight point two nanofarads. So here's a new design. Um, I'm going to go. Back to GNU plot now and try typing in these values. Um, if this time I got it right. Oops. Uh, Ri was going to now be 3.9 kilo ohms. Um, Ci was going to be 47 nanofarads. Up. E minus 9. Um, RF was going to be 3.9 kilo ohms, and CF was going to be uh, 8.2 nanofarads. Does this design work? Moment of truth. Uh, no, I screwed something up. Point nine kilo ohms, eight point two nanofarads. Ah, typed in RF wrong. All right, that was the value for RI. RF was supposed to be one hundred sixty nine kilo ohms. And this is why I always want to do these checks, because it's really easy to make copying errors like that. And students are doing it all the time in their designs, but then they don't check them. And so doing the check, now I'm getting a value that makes sense. Um, 101 hertz for the lower corner frequency, gain of minus 5.06, that's a pretty good gain. Upper corner frequency, 983.1. 
one hertz again pretty close to one kilohertz this is looking very much like the sort of filter we want and notice that there's nothing there that was bigger than the 47 uh 47 nanofarads i would want to change the way i print this thing out rather than 0.05 microfarads that should be written in nanofarads but details okay so now we've got what three four different designs that we've done here um plus one failed design where i typed the numbers in wrong um and this is basically what one does to go about designing a filter like this is you solve for the time constants pick an arbitrary value for some component that looks reasonable propagate that value then through the other components and then check to make sure that you haven't made any mistakes in doing that um, and sometimes you go well this design works but i don't like some property of it started we started over again with a totally different value of the capacitor so we have small capacitors instead of big capacitors and again propagate it through the design check to make sure we didn't make any copying errors in or you know putting down 39 instead of 3.9 kilo ohms things like that i mean i made a lot of mistakes when i was doing this uh previous video that i threw away um and you're going to make mistakes copying mistakes computation mistakes so always do a check when you're done take the values that you've decided to use and go back and compute what should that design do don't just say oh well i designed it it must work because now nah, you're a human being you're going to make mistakes crucial thing for engineering is to put in lots of checks so that when a mistake gets made, it gets caught and corrected, as opposed to just propagating blindly through the system. Okay, I think that's enough on this example. Have fun designing and pass filters.